Amen. In short, what that verse is saying, that discipline is very painful and none of us enjoys it. But the product of it, it produces righteousness and peace for those who accept discipline. Amen. And therefore, this morning, as we talk about parental authority, I just try to give a definition of it. There are quite a number of definitions. But by the grace of God, I'll perhaps pick what is relevant to us so that we see how God, especially compared to the scripture we've talked about, is the great discipline, uh, the, the great man who does discipline. And therefore, God, as our father, has parental authority over us, and therefore, he disciplines because of the relationship you have with him. You are a son as a child of God or a daughter of God and God is our father. And therefore he exercises a parental authority and at times discipline over us. And it is quite tricky for us many times. We only assume that Christian life is new, it is smooth. At times when you go wayward, some discipline comes in so that you come back to track. Therefore, you need to be under parental authority. We draw our parental authority, especially we as parents, from God because he has entrusted us to be stewards. So the stewardship we have as parents is drawn and mirrors what God does. And that is the parental authority we have. And therefore, this morning, I want to address the parents here. As a disclaimer, if you've relaxed in serving God because you have children, those children are not yours. They are only a gift given to you by God and you are exercising parental authority and even discipline on behalf of God. Therefore, you are operating under delegated parental authority. Amen? Because you are operating under delegated authority. And therefore, as a steward, you are just an overseer or a manager. Somebody has told you, check these children on my behalf. That means that certain expectations, standards, and principles, God expects you to exercise over your children. And if you go through the scriptures, I'll not delve in details into it, but originally, especially in Genesis chapter 5, verse 12, the word stewardship indicates that you man over the house. You are in charge. And that is where we draw our parental authority. And if you look at Exodus 20, verse 12, this is what the scriptures say. Now that is for the children. Because of the contemporary society we are in, where there's what we call liberalism, I can do whatever I want. There's a lot of defiance, and people do not respect authority. Now, in Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, this is what the scriptures say. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Therefore, it is one of the great commandments that the Lord gave that there should be honor for mother and father. Now, I'm talking to all of us because we are parents. We must honor our parents. For this is the first commandment with a promise. And what is the promise? That you may have long life. That means there are certain consequences that you suffer by defying parental authority, shortness of life, and perhaps struggle of life. Parental authority is paramount to all of us. Praise the name of the Lord. And therefore, it is my desire this morning that as a parent, now you are representing and mirroring God on this earth because he has given you that aspect to operate under delegated authority. And as you do that, you must also discharge your stewardship role or authority by exercising discipline. You must discipline those who are under you. Now, what is discipline? 
Discipline means, as a parent, you set boundaries for children of what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. What is appropriate and what is not appropriate. You reinforce the positive things to be done that is acceptable and you reinforce that that is negative not to be done. There are many definitions. But I know the challenge for us today as parents that we do not want to set boundaries. And it's because of the rights and privileges at times that have been stipulated in our legal framework, in our constitution, and the children's rights. And for us who are born again, we subscribe to the scriptures, the Bible, because that is if there's anything called the Ark Constitution. In Kenya, the Ark law is the constitution. Yes, we'll submit to it, but for us who belong to the kingdom of God, over and above the constitution of Kenya 2010, our supreme law and constitution, where we draw discipline, is the word of God. And that means then you must read the word of God for you to know how to discipline your child. It is all encompassing. It is all enriching. It has every facet and aspect of what we need as far as disciplining our children is concerned. Now we are in this kingdom and God has a variety of children. Even God as a disciplinarian, he must be finding us to be very interesting. I see at times on Sunday in church, very simple, I'm giving an example of discipline. The ushers have a rough time. So they usher you in and they tell you, sit on this second row. And they go to the last row. Isn't that just an aspect or symbol of indiscipline? And you're in the, in discipline, and you're in the house of God. You can imagine then, those perhaps are just 500 people in a congregation. What about God? I think he has about 9 billion people to deal with. Now, because of that variety, let me give you, from a theoretical point of view, the type of parenting styles that do exist, okay? It is just a sample, so that you be aware, perhaps where do you fit in as a parent as you bring up your children, all right? And I'm going to look at just, there are four, but there's an emerging one, which is a fifth one. Now, the parenting styles, there's one that is called authoritative. Then there is authoritarian. Then there is permissive and neglectful. I look at them just one by one very fast, and then now I bring and anchor that to the word of God. Authoritarian parents are parents who are firm, but are loving. They can tell their children, nitakuchapa, but with a smile. And when they say nitakuchapa, for real, watamuchapa, and they'll cane you and say, now, are you feeling painful? Yes, I feel painful. Will you ever repeat that again? I will not repeat again. That is what an authoritative parent does. At times, I know we boast and say, you know, I've never caned my children. Neither have I ever rebuked them. Perhaps you are assuming that is positive. To some extent, it may be positive, but to some extent, it may not, all be, posit it may not be positive, it may be negative. We need to exercise parental authority on our children. So the authoritative parent has rules and sets consequences they have told you. We'll tell you, I'll cane you, and for real, they'll cane. But also, the good thing about authoritative parents, that they try as much as possible to show the children the way in which they should go. And that is anchored on the word of God. And that's why the word of God says, spare, 
the rod and spoil the child. An authoritative parent knows that if you, sp if you spare the rod, what do you do? You spoil the child. And in today's times when it is so difficult to cane the children, it becomes a problem. Yesterday I was in a funeral and one of the bishops of SK church said, in one of the schools that we are, the sponsors of that school, it has been reported in social media that some, uh, some teachers have caned our children and there is need for discipline to be taken against that teacher. And it made me start thinking, yes, today I'm going to talk about discipline. But on the other hand, a teacher having perhaps disciplined a student is supposed to be disciplined because according to those who are stakeholders, that was not right. The dilemma we have is, how do we do it according to the scriptures? To have a balance according to the scriptures and then also to ensure you do not break the law in accordance to the Kenyan constitution. Do it in love. Because God is love. And love does not inflict pain for the purpose of it. Amen? May the Lord help us that by his grace, we should be able to discipline our children in accordance to the word of God. And research shows that if you are an authoritative parent, averagely, those are the most successful children in life. Because you show them the way, the skills they acquired, and they are able to follow what you told them. And remember Timothy, what Paul told him? That what your grandmother and mother showed you, the seeds we plant in our children will grow. And when we train them in the way of the Lord, what do the scriptures say? They shall not depart from it. Then we have the authoritarian parents. Those are parents, perhaps is a father, when he arrives and is at the gate and gives a cough, all the children stop doing whatever they're doing and they run helter-skelter, even including the mother. Authoritarian parenting. Authoritarian parenting are those ones, whatever they say, it is final. And they are famously said to indicate when they are questioned, whatever they are saying, they'll say, don't you know I am the one in charge? Because I have said so, you must follow. So it is either the way or the highway. And there is no negotiation about it. If it is a mother or a father, they'll call a child. And if the child does not respond, they'll say, I'm calling you and you're not responding. And if they respond, they'll say, I'm talking to you and you're talking. And therefore, it becomes very difficult for this child. Because it is their way or the highway. Do you think that is the kind of parenting the Lord God wants us to have? No. They do not allow their children to get into problem solving challenges because they suffocate the space for them. That is not the model God wants for them. God wants us to be loving parents because he loved us, so must we love our children. Permissive parents, that is another parenting style. They are lenient. They never put in any rules. Anything goes. When the child wants chocolate, they'll be given chocolate. When the child cries, they say baby, daddy, granny, and all sweet names. And they try to as much as possible to compensate 
any discomfort of a child as much as possible and they display some kind of indiscipline in them and the indiscipline the children have, it does not bother the parents and at times they excuse the child by saying, let children be children. I listened to a certain preacher and he said, whenever he talk about parental authority and discipline in his church, it would become very unpopular because at times you step on people's toes. And as I reflect this, also as a parent, I know I've erred in many of these things because there's no manual and nobody told us. At times, I remember when I was younger and in my firstborn, we visited and because I also believed in let children be children, the child arrives and pulls all the tablecloths in the house and then you are visiting, the child breaks the glass and you're just looking and smiling and say, let children be children. Now we are allowing children to grow with mannerisms. They may be small infants, and as they grow, they start throwing tantrums. And even when they become teenagers, they throw tantrums because the permissive parent did not set boundaries and limits for them. And with time, they grew up knowing that they can do whatever they want. And it is, these children who are said in research that the ones who are the ones who cause strikes, that the ones who are noisemakers, that the ones who have difficult because they do not grow under authority. May the Lord God help us this morning. That are you a, permiss a permissive parent? If you are, reflect and start setting boundaries for your children. And as you na mamaya, what happens? Ufunzwa na ulimwengu. If you do not set boundaries for your children, somebody else will have to set it for them. The school will set it for them. When they get to work, they'll have to sign a code of conduct. And at the workplace, they'll have to do it. Amen? I have quite a number of verses for that, but nonetheless, I'll just skip that. But this is just to give you highlights of the type of parents we have. And then we have parents who are uninvolved. Uninvolved. They are not involved in their children's lives at all. And at times it's not in their making. It is because of the contemporary demands of the world that we have today. Perhaps your job is very demanding or you have to be away for many, uh, a long time away from home or it's because of business. Now the uninvolving parents tend to have little knowledge about their children. Even when they bring, if you are to ask them, what class is your child? Can you imagine? Even what was the position of your child in school? Honestly, I was too busy, I forgot. The uninvolved parent. Now, God does not want us to bring our children like that. And these children do not receive much guidance, nurturing and parental attention. I'm involved in the missions, ministry, in church. And many times we go to schools to preach. I remember one time we went to one of the best performing schools in Kisumu County, Maseno School. And after that, we had a counseling session after the preaching from about 1 to 5 a.m. They are academic giants, but in terms of social life and spiritual life, they were ailing. And there's this young man who came and told us, I was counseling, he said, I am a very ambitious young man. In fact, I want to be a president one day. But my problem is, my parents do not care what happens to me. When I go home, it is me to set up things for myself. I have my own room. I go there. Whether I want to remove school uniform, it's my problem. If I want to show them the report card, it does not matter. And therefore, his problem was, nobody sets boundaries for him. I found it weird then 
Because I thought if I was the one, I would be very happy. You have all the freedom. It's upon him to wake up in the morning, go wherever he goes, comes back, and nobody bothers for him. The uninvolved parents does not divert much energy to his children's basic needs and can be neglectful at times not intentionally. And that is because of the demands that are there. Now, may the Lord help us. If you find yourself in such a situation, and at times you may not even notice the changes that are happening in your children. And let me draw to our attention. It is necessary for us, because we are stewards, to know what is happening in our children's lives. Once in a while, get into their bedrooms and just look for leads. Might they be getting into drugs? May they be looking at pornographic material? Are they having peers that are not good? And because I'm at the university, we look at many students whose parents send them money, but they do not attend lectures. First year goes, second year, and then the day of reckoning comes when it is graduation time. I remember such a parent did, and they went for a whole bus. They realized the child had not been attending lessons, and therefore there was no graduation. Another parent in ask, uh, ESIU, because of being too busy, the child did not graduate and has taken eight good years instead of three years in USIU. Do you ever check the hostels your children go to? Do you talk to the, to the teachers to find out what is happening to them? It is necessary that we take up our responsibility as parents. And for the children who are here, as long as you have parents, may you submit to them in Jesus' name. And then we have the other involving parent, or we call them helicopter parents. Of late, we've been having helicopters around. <laughs> helicopter parent is the one who suffocates the child. Amen? And these parents do not give them space. Wherever they are, they have to be with these children. That is also not a good parenting style. Because if you micromanage your child, in other words, you are bringing up what is called a sausage generation, whereby they think that life is so soft and pampered, that life does not have challenges. It is necessary to give them some space. And if you do that, you as a parent will become paranoid with time. I know of some who even do not are now doing homeschooling because they know the world is so polluted and they do not want their children to mingle with any other child because their ch children will be polluted and defiled. And therefore they do homeschooling. What usually happens? The moment these children are exposed to things that they've never encountered in life, they overdo it. They overindulge because they have not developed life skills, they have not been exposed, and you've not taught them the ways of the Lord as to how to cope with it. Jesus Christ said that you are in the world, but not of the world. So in this world we shall be, although we shall not conform to the, conform to the standards of this world. We will not conform to the patterns, despite the fact that we are in this world. And the good thing is the scriptures say we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Despite the fact that I'm giving you these parental techniques, it is good that we have Jesus Christ who is the author and finisher of our faith. And therefore we look to him unto salvation. Even if the world is so challenging and things are marooning us, we can look up to him because there's a hope and that hope does not disappoint. Amen. May the Lord help us.
What is God calling us to do? First of all, as I've said and I've repeated in this sermon, God is love and we must love as God loves. Therefore, disciplining your child is giving real love. It is not hating a child. And that's why Proverbs chapter 13 verse 24 says, He who spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him disciplines him diligently. Therefore, we must discipline our children, and that is how we express real love for him or her. Now, if we don't do so, what will happen? The children may have demands or whatever in disciplinary characteristic that is in them may grow and become a monster and it comes out as little signs. Seek help if you feel as a parent you are not in a position to do so. Talk to somebody that is a mentor in church and at times a professional counselor, but above all, seek the help of God because God is our father and is the one who disciplines us. Praise the name of the Lord. As I end, why do we discipline? And from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 4 to 11, from verse 4, this is what the Bible uh, indicates, that Christian discipline is about watching your child to see the direction he's going. You have to watch over your child and see which direction are they going. And if they're going against the precepts of the Lord, what is not in the word of God, it is upon you to use the rod and bring them back to the line. It means, two, with discipline, it has to be actions and words. That means whatever words you tell your children, it must be also what you do. If you tell them, come home early, and you come always perpetually at 10, then it's very difficult for them to understand why you tell them to come early and you come late. At one time, I told my children, when it's time for prayer, the family altar, everybody has to be quiet, phones have to be put aside, and then the TV has to be switched off. And then as we we're just having the family altar, I picked my phone call and spoke. And after that, they say, you are the first one to break your rules. <laughs> of course, the temptation was there to be an authoritarian parent. And I said, I am the mother of this house and I'm in charge. Most of you have said so. But I realized I was just sowing a seed of rebellion in them. Since that time, it does not matter. When it's family altar time, it doesn't matter how important the phone call is. I have to put it aside because we are going to speak to God the Father who is going to sort out all our issues. And I've known that, that God is more important than phone call. Amen. And then the, another time they challenged me, you tell us to be quiet. Why is it that when it is church and we are praying at times the keyboard is playing background music, can't we also put on the TV and it plays? I've never had an answer for that. Amen? Actions and words, and that's what Hebrews verse 5 says. And then the motive of discipline, it is to express love and not inflict pain. Proverbs 13, verse 24, and Hebrews 12, 6, at your own time you'll read. So one of the most powerful ways to love your child is to be consistent in discipline, and if you discipline them, you must continue disciplining them until that is implanted in them. Amen? Let's raise up family altars in our house. And one of the things that are complaints in most homes I'm not doing an accusation. Most fathers are absent in family altars. And it's more of the mothers who are leading 
in the altars, family altars. It is good when the family does it together. That we discipline to express love and not to inflict pain. And I know that traditional ways in which people have been doing, we've seen in the newspapers, at times they burn the hand of a child because they stole something of the sort. That is not God's way of discipline. And then the goal of discipline is to teach obedience. And true discipline starts with children being grounded and seasoned in the word of God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And discipline that is true, that is genuine, and that can be sustained, comes out of teaching your children the word of God and them submitting their lives to the Lord. And the essence of a family altar is actually to lead them to the Lord over time. And with time, that is the opportunity as a parent. You are able to pass the values, the norms, and all that you ascribe to as a parent through family altar. Amen? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And then there is, uh, the, what is the result for discipline? Short-term pain, but long-term gain. And that is verse 10 to 11. You'll read it at your own time. But Proverbs 19 verse 18 says, Discipline your child, for there is hope. Do not set your heart on putting him to death. So it may be painful, but it is to give you hope. Children who are disciplined and have succeeded in lives, I've seen parents will always introduce and say, Meet my son so and so. He's at the university doing architectural science. But I know perhaps if a child has gotten into drugs, say, this is just one of my sons and that is it. And they'll not make any additions. And this is what this verse is saying. Proverbs 9, 18. That for there is hope. And 23, 13 says, do not withhold discipline from children. If you strike him with a rod, he will not die. Do you fear disciplining your children? That if they're used to watching the TV and they have a favorite program and that day they misbehaved, tell them for one good week, you will not watch this program. In counseling, they say self-disclosure. At times you have to disclose your life for people to resonate with what you're talking about. One time one of my children who loves eating, I told him, now you're not going to be eating this food for one full week, a specific thing he liked, sausage. And I say, ay, sintakufa, ntaweza. And then I knew that has really pained him. Because you're seeing it is near death. A whole week, he felt he will die. This is what the scriptures say. That do not withhold discipline from a child. If you strike him with a rod. Now, withdrawing the sausage was the rod. He will not die. What is this that this child likes? When they misbehave, we draw it. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that as we've talked about this, as I conclude, that perhaps as we are talking about this, you're feeling so helpless and wondering. Perhaps it's this child who has been very stubborn. And today I know if you just took averagely, children have gotten into drugs, into wrong company, some are not obedient, rebellious, disobedient that we commit all this to the Lord because when we commit our ways to the Lord, he will make straight our paths. May the Lord intervene in your situation in the name of Jesus. That that situation that is disturbing you, that for a long time you've been wondering whether you'll be able to do it. It is the Lord that maketh that path that is not straight to be straight. That whatever crooked path it is in your family, in the name of Jesus Christ, may he intervene because he makes a way where there is no way. When the wasteland is there, he will ensure that that wasteland is not just a wasteland. That where there is no water, he will ensure there is water that is passing through in the name of Jesus. May the Lord intervene in your situation in the family. That crooked way. Because he is a God of possibilities. Amen. 
I pray the Lord intervenes. May the Lord intervene. May the Lord intervene. And this we trust by faith it is possible. Because the scriptures say that those who walk in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. But those who walk in the realm of the spirit and by faith it is calling those things that are not to be. May your son, may your daughter be in the way of the Lord in the name of Jesus. And if you feel as a parent that that situation is defeating you, may you and may he enable you because it is by the spirit of God. It is not out of the other knowledge that you've acquired, but may the spirit of the Lord empower you to discipline your children and as a steward, do it in accordance to the precepts of God. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.